Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more of the Fire Emblem 7 playthrough. Hope you guys enjoyed the first video. We're going to be tackling the second video now. And as you can see, we now have some more units we're going to be controlling here. We have Kent and Sane. They are both Cavaliers. They are mounted units, which means they have very, very high movement. They can cover quite a bit of the map especially these small beginning maps as well so they're gonna be some very very capable fighters for this first part of the game uh, so I guess to kinda go over their stats here and I guess it's kind of uh, worth mentioning that uh, Cavaliers actually have a bit of a trope in Fire Emblem games where there's always a um, red Cavalier and a green Cavalier and uh, basically both of the Cavaliers have different stats and attributes and it goes all the way back to the very first Fire Emblem game uh, where it was Cain and Abel uh, I believe Cain was the red knight Abel was the green knight and they kind of again they had like their own set of stats and attributes which made them both very capable and good units and they kind of carried that through the rest of the series uh, for those of you who have been joining me through a lot of my other Fire Emblem playthroughs uh, there's Ford and Kyle uh, from the Fire Emblem Sacred Stones playthrough, uh, from Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. There's also Oscar and Kieran, who are kind of the uh, Red Knight, Green Knights. And in this game, we have Kent and Sane. And honestly, of all the uh, Red and Green social knights in the history of the series, I'd say Kent and Sane are probably my favorite. I love how Kent's kind of a very serious, uh, always focused on his duty type of knight. While Sane, he's kind of more in-depth with all of the romantic stylings of a knight. He's always, like, very, very open about being, like, a hero and just trying to woo all the ladies and everything. So, again, two very stark contrasts between these two characters, not just in terms of their personalities, but also their stats as well. Uh, Sane, for example, uh, Sane has really, really high strength. In fact, I want to say uh, Sane has one of the highest strength growths in the entire game, uh, really only being beaten by one character who has a 5% increase over him. Uh, so he has a very, very, very high strength growth. Um, his other stats aren't too bad. Um, in terms of skill and speed, I'd say Kent is a little better in that department. Uh, in terms of defenses, they're about even, but I'd say Kent has a slight advantage. Again, it's more of like a 5 to 10% advantage. And, you know, there's always the possibility that, like, one knight will not turn as out as well as another knight, or another character won't be as good as another character just because of the RNG that goes in the level ups. Uh, but still, again, uh, just uh, the two different characters and the two different uh, varying attributes of stats just really makes this... Uh, a very interesting game where in every single playthrough just depending on the units you use you can have different experiences as you go throughout the game uh, but yeah that's basically all I have to say as you can see we're still fighting uh, bandits here so they're all gonna be axe users which is not too much of a problem because as you can see from Kent's inventory here he has a sword however Sane does not have a uh, sword in his possession he only has a lance however Lynn has a sword that she can give as well, and I'm actually not going to be using Lynn in the first part of this anyway, so uh, I'm actually going to have Kent and Sane do all the work, at least for this chapter, and then when we get to the very end, I want to use Lynn to get the final kill on Zugu here, so that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. Uh, so first of all, another thing I am going to pay attention to here is just again, just because of the stats we're working with right here. I have a little more faith in Kent to potentially dodge an attack from these guys. So what I'm going to do here... Actually, shoot, I can't really do that. Can I... Again, this is very unfortunate because this is the only place where I can actually move Sane right now. Um, let's see. How do I want to go... Oh, I guess I could get... Okay, you know what? Let's do this. I'll just give him the sword first. I won't move Sane first. Actually, I couldn't do that anyway. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and do this. If he tries to move for Lin, that's just going to be unfortunate, I guess. But 
she can she can take a hit or two. So we're gonna use. In terms of which unit I want to use long term here, it doesn't really matter. I kind of always just play it by ear. I level them both up in Lens Story, and when we get to the later chapters of the game, I then make my decisions based on the level ups they've been getting. So we'll just kind of, again, play it by ear and see uh, how this basically continues through the first part of the game here. So there's uh, Sane's Strength coming in handy right away, doing 11 damage right off the bat, and I believe... Uh, should Kent be able to finish him off here, or will he still be alive? Okay, Kent will be able to finish him off, so that's good. Oh, he actually gets a critical for his trouble, too. A little unnecessary, but still, uh, always nice to see whenever it pops up. But as you can see, there are a lot of forests around here, and forests are interesting. As you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, um, each terrain has a basic... Uh, basically affects your stats in some way. Whenever your units are in a forest, you'll gain 20% avoision, and you'll also gain one extra defensive point too. So definitely make use of the terrain whenever you can, because that can be very, very helpful. Uh, so for this unit right here, because Kent did get a kill already, I'll give Sane this kill. Oh, this is actually kind of unfortunate. Um, we actually won't get the kill on this guy because he is in a forest, so we're not going to have enough um, strength to get rid of this. But that's okay, we'll do what we can. I guess I could have tried using a lance right there, because that would have probably gotten the kill, but it's risky using a lance, because when you have the weapon disadvantage, uh, your hit percentage will get lower, so you got to look out for that whenever that comes up. And it looks like these knights are going for Kent. Which is unfortunate, he doesn't need the kills, but uh, he is going to get them anyway. Don't worry, Sane, we'll get you some kills. Don't you worry about it. In fact, let's do this. I'm going to put Kent right here. Sane right here, so this way he can't use the woods to attack us. And this way Lin is still out of uh, harm's way as well. Of course, he goes for Kent again, because why not? <laughs> Jeez, Kent's about to level up, too, so... Okay, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to move Kent right here, so he'll draw up this last guy. Meanwhile, Sane is going to get the kill on this guy. Yep. And again, we'll just keep on moving Lin closer to the action, but also not in harm's way either. And see, this way, and this is actually going to work out very nicely, assuming that we don't get a critical with uh, Kent right here, we're going to go ahead and put one more hit in. This should give Kent a level up. And then we can get the uh, kill with Sane and get a little closer to his first level up. Only HP and defense. A very defensive level up. Unfortunately, you know, didn't get his uh, more prominent stats, but uh, did get some defense, which I guess isn't too bad. You'll have plenty of time to get that skill and speed, especially since they are his uh, potentially his highest gross. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead, move Sane over here, get this kill. Um, I might also do this, just to put him a little... Actually, that should be close enough to get to the boss. So we're going to go ahead and get that kill. This will put him up in the 80% uh, range. And a few hits on the boss should actually put him the rest of the way that he needs to get to. So another thing I think I am going to do here is because we don't need it anymore, I'm going to go ahead and give Lin a sword again. How much damage can you do to Zugu, Sane? 10? Okay, so at least with this, he's not going to kill Zugu unless he gets that 1% crit. Accursed Knights! Always tampering in others' affairs. 
And I don't think he's going to actually gain HP as well. And we're also covered in terms of uh, Sane's HP. Because even if he gets this hit, Sane will still be alive. So I'm not too worried about that either. And see, this way, when we start the next turn, we can just go ahead and KO this guy and uh, finish this chapter. And Sane also gets his level up. Let's see what we get. Not bad, not bad. HP, strength, skill. You get one of uh, Sane's worth stat gross, which is uh, skill. And you also get his best, which is strength, um, HP. Never bad to get that either. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not too uh, disappointed with that. I think that was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, as I said before, we're going to use... Um, Hold on just a second. Because you're down... Okay, yeah, you're down to 3 HP now. So, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and keep Kent's sword on Lin. That is what I did, right? Yes, it is. Okay. So, I'll go ahead and do that. And we will finish up this map. Blast! There was only supposed to be a lone girl. Well, unfortunately, you were wrong. Unfortunately for you. For me, I I'm feeling pretty good about that. As far as that level up's concerned, uh, not too impressed. Speed's good, HP is good, but not really sure about that luck level up, though. That's the last of them. Fantastic work, Slim. And now for these knights from Lycia, you were going to share your story with me. Yes, we have ventured from Kaelin and Lycia in search of someone. Lycia, that's the country beyond the mountains in the southwest, isn't it? Correct, we've come as messengers to the Lady Madeline, who eloped with a nomad some 19 years ago. Madeline? Our lord, the Marquis of Kaelin's only daughter. He was heartbroken his own daughter would abandon him so. Eventually, the Marquis simply declared that he had no daughter. And then this year, we received a letter from Lady Madeline. It said that she, her husband, and their daughter were living happily on the Sakae Plains. The Marquis was ecstatic to learn he had a granddaughter of 18 years. I remember the smile on his face when he announced that he'd suddenly become a grandfather. The, the grandfather's name, the granddaughter's name, is Lindis. This was also the name of the Marquise's wife, who passed away at an early age. Lindis? That she should bear this name thawed the Marquise's heart. Now his only wish is to meet his daughter's family at least once. This is why we're here. We didn't know that Lady Madeline died a few days after sending her letter. We only learned this shortly after we arrived here in Bolgar. But we also learned all was not lost, her daughter yet lives. We heard that she was living alone on the plains. I... I knew it immediately. You are the Lady Lindis. Why would you think that? Your resemblance to your departed mother is remarkable. What? Did you know my mother? I'm sorry to say I never met her directly, but I saw her portraits in Castle Caelan. To the rest of my tribe, I was always Lynn, but when I was with my parents, when it was just the three of us, I was Lindis. It's all so strange. I was all alone in the world, and now I have a grandfather. Lindis, I never thought I would hear that name again. Wait! That bandit, he called me Lindus too. What? How could he have... He was a henchman of Lord Lundgren, wasn't he? Lundgren? Who's that? He's the Marquise's younger brother. Everyone assumed the Lady Madeline was gone forever. This made Lord Lundgren heir to the Marquise's title. To be blunt, my lady, your existence is an obstacle to your granduncle's ambitions. That's... But I have no interest in inheriting any title. Unfortunately, your granduncle is not the sort of man to believe that. I believe the attempts on your life will persist. What should I do? 
Accompany us to Caitlin. Continuing on this way is dangerous. I feel I have little choice. I will go with you. Slim, I'm sorry. This changes everything. What will you do, Slim? You want me to decide? Of course your companionship would do much to ease my journey, but... It's going to be so dangerous. You'll come? Are you sure? Thank you. Let me ask once again for your friendship and your aid. Okay, so there we go. Chapter 1 is completed, and I might be able to complete this next chapter in this video as well. I'm going to have to get things moving, though, so let's go ahead and get this started. A small altar lies in the outskirts of Bolgar. This ancient temple, sacred to the people of Sake, has long been known for its powerful bond to the worlds of spirits. Before starting their journey, our travelers come here to pray for their well-being. At this altar, Lin's hand is directed to a grand inheritance. Chapter 2 Sword of Spirits Slim, hold a moment and allow me a short detour. There is a sacred sword enshrined in an altar east of here. The people of Sake go there to pray for safety at the onset of a long journey. Oh, how quaint! The teachings of Elamine have the most followers in Alib. It is nice to see that, here at least, the ancient customs are still observed. Old man, stay where you are and hold your tongue. Threaten me as you will, but I will not give up the Manakati. The Manakati is a sacred blade under divine protection. It cannot be removed from its place of rest. You're an a fool, old man. What good's a sword if you don't use it? Use it in combat? Sacrilege. Sacrilege? I am glass. The gods fear my name. My sword play is peerless. And if I want this sword, then this sword I shall have. Now get out of my way. Oof. This is it. It's more magnificent than I'd imagined. This sword was made for a swordsman of my skill. Hmm? What's this? I can't draw the sword from its scabbard? The spirits of the blade have judged you. You have been found wanting. They have rejected you. What? Listen, you old senile old fool. If you value your own life, you'll get out of my sight. Curses, miserable spirits. I care nothing for you. I'll tear this altar down, stone by stone. I beg your pardon, my lady. Are you headed east to the altar? Yes, we are indeed. Then you must hurry and help the priest there. I saw a band of local ruffians heading in there not too long ago. They seemed intent on stealing the altar's sacred sword. The Monocotti? They're going to steal it? I cannot allow this to happen. You look like a virtuous group. Please help him. Lindus, what are you planning? If you hope to go to the priest's aid, you'll need to prepare. You're right. Say, Slim, there are some homes to the south of us. Perhaps we should go there and question the residents. Or, you know, we could, you know, just uh, not do that. <laughs> Sorry, there, there's really not a reason to, because a lot of the stuff you'll learn from these houses are pretty much going to be taught to by me anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and ignore this, but if you are playing normal mode, you will be forced to go in these houses first. But again, like I said, they'll just kind of cover things that I've already talked about or will talk about in this specific chapter. Uh, so here we are, we have uh, pretty much the same units we're working with in the last chapter. Uh, we got some more brigands, so they'll be uh, pretty easy, I imagine. And we also have a new type of unit. We have a Myrmidon. 
and we'll deal with him when we actually get to that point. Let's go ahead and start focusing on our uh, initial movements here. Uh, you have a sword, you don't have a sword, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you a sword back, because I don't need a Lindus right now. And I'll just go ahead and move Sane here to this forest. I'll move Kent over here, and Lin I'll just kind of keep in the background. I guess I could also go over some of the options, but I think I'll do that at the beginning of the next video when there's going to be a lot of stuff to discuss as it is. I kind of want to just get through the rest of this chapter in this specific video. Uh, so let's see, 18, 0, we'll go ahead and give Kent the kill here. So what we're going to do in this next part is we're obviously going to make sure we don't uh, keep these units on the mountains because not only will they get that one defense, but they also get 30 avoid and that's going to be really, really hard to hit them with. So I'm going to go ahead and just move uh, Sane right here for now. I'll also move Lin forward too. Sane getting another very strong hit in right there, which is always good to see. And I guess I'll go ahead and move you down as well. Um, at this point, again, doesn't really matter who gets the kill, I guess. Um, hmm, there is also the matter of this wall, too. Again, I wish, I wish in this specific case Len could use lances so she could break open this wall, but unfortunately... I want to keep the uh, sword game strong here, so I guess I'll just go ahead and move you here, and maybe they'll go after uh, they'll go after Kent instead of Sane, or at least this guy will anyway. So we'll see what happens. Yep. Okay. Cool. Enemies are stupid. <laughs> what can I say? Enemies are sometimes just really, really stupid. It is interesting, though, because I really thought you would get, like, another sword at some point for, like, one of your other knights, but I guess not. I must have been uh, misremembering that fact. Okay, so I'm going to do this. You have enough experience right now, so I'm going to go ahead and start using you to... Actually, hold on. Dang it. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess I could do this. I'm going to go ahead and use a lance here and then switch to the sword next turn. And I guess you'll go ahead and finish off this guy and then I'll just use Sane to get the remaining two uh, brigands in there. That should give him a, a level up or, again, pretty close to a level up. And as far as terrain, since we were talking about this earlier, over here we have forts. Uh, forts give you 2 defense, 20 avoid, and also have a bonus of healing you up if you are low on uh, HP, so these are very, very valuable to use whenever you're low. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about it so much, but they are there if you need them. Okay, so actually, again, it would be nice if I could move Kent up here so he can move in here, but that is fine. We'll go ahead and just use Sane to break this open. I guess I'll go ahead and give you the sword that Kent was using. Because Kent's going to probably be working on getting rid of this guy. And we'll start moving forward here. I think at the very least, when Sane kills that other brigand, brigand, he'll probably, yeah, he'll definitely be leveled up, so. This way I can just focus on Glass here. And yeah, thankfully he's not going to do too much damage. I really hope uh, Kent does not critical, but if he does, we're just going to have to deal with it. Who do you think you are? What chance do you think you have against me? Pretty good chance, actually. You can only do three damage, so... I'm feeling pretty good about my chances, to be quite honest. <laughs> That's just me, though. So he is going to attack again. I don't exactly have a really high percent of, a chance of attacking him, but at least we get the level up. 
And that's going to give Kent some strength and some HP. Not bad. Strength is good. A little uh, disappointed I'm not getting any speed, though, because speed's going to be really nice for these guys moving forward. But, you know, sometimes you just got to deal with those punches when they come at you. Also, this guy does have a vulnerary, which means, and it is sparkling green, which means when the, he actually goes down, we'll get that item. So we'll have a, another vulnerary we can use. And honestly, it looks like Sane could use one, so <laughs> that may not be a bad thing to get. So this looks kind of dangerous, but 79% is not too bad. Plus, we have two chances to attack, and he only does eight damage. He can't kill us on two attack rounds, so we'll be fine. You, you, erg! And we get a vulnerary. We obviously knows, know what those do already, but they are nice to have. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this last kill with Sane, and then we'll finish up this chapter. It is going to be a bit of a long video, but again... Um, at least we got two chapters done in this one video, so I'm very happy about that, at least. Ooh, that is a very good level up saying. HP, strength, skill, and speed. Gotta say, I'm honestly liking the chances of using Sane over Kent a little more in this playthrough. Just because he has gotten skill, he's gotten speed, and he's gotten strength every level up so far, so... Zane could be potentially uh, the uh, Cavalier we use. We'll just have to wait and see how the rest of these uh, level ups go in the future chapters. Uh, but yeah, with that, we are done, so let's go ahead and seize the throne to finish up this battle. Ah, oh, your clothing! Are you of the Lorca tribe? I'm Lin, the Chief Shin's daughter. Are you hurt, sir? Thanks to you, I am unscathed. You have my gratitude. And the sword, is it safe? Yes, I have sealed the sword safely away. Until I remove my spell, the sword cannot be drawn. Now, as a token of my gratitude, I shall allow you to lay hands upon the Monocati. Touch the blade's pattern and pray for a safe journey. Oh, thank you so much. Hmm? What did... The sword. It's glowing. Oh, hmm. It's the power of the spirits. Lin, they have looked into your soul, and they call out to you. What does this mean? You are its rightful owner. You are to wield the Monocati. No, I, I can't. I couldn't. It is the sword's wish. If you require proof... Draw it from its sheath. Um... It came out effortlessly. I never dared to hope that I might meet the wielder of the Monocati in my life. I am indeed fortunate to see your sword reach your hands. My sword? It is time for you to go, Lin. You face a great many ordeals. Grip this sword and meet your destiny head on. Yes, yes, sir. And we get the Monocati, guys. Awesome. We'll take a look at that sword and its stats a little bit later. So this is the Monocati, a blade with no equal. This is also unbelievable. Perhaps the most famous sword in all of Sake in my hand. It's not so strange. In fact, many legends tell similar tales. Special blades all over the land call out to their proper owners. And yet, when I saw you draw that blade, Lindus, I felt something extraordinary. That sword was waiting for you. You were meant to draw it. Stop it. I... I'm nothing special. Think of it this way. Some weapons feel more comfortable in your hand, right? Well, the Monocati itself feels very comfortable with you. Does this make it any easier for you to accept? It doesn't appear that either of us can use it. It does feel right in my hand, a blade that only I can wield. That seems reasonable enough, I can understand that. Look at it, Slim. This is the Monocati. This is 
my sword. I must care for it well. And with that, I think... Oh, wait, no, we have more. Oh, my, going overtime for this video. What? Madeline's daughter is still alive? Oh, uh, yes, Lord Lundgren. The girl is traveling with Kent and Sane. What are your orders? If we let them be... Bah! I've heard that northern burn is full of bandits. She's just a girl. She'll not survive her journey here. I'm more concerned with my older brother. His life must be ended quickly. The poison. There must be no blunders. Yes, my lord. He suspects nothing and continues to drink it. The Marquise's death, due no doubt to sudden illness, is not far off. Heh heh heh. Soon. Soon Kaelin will be mine. What an asshole. See you guys next time. Later, folks.